Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about minimum submergence. We get this question quite often when it relates to how deep does my foot valve need to be in order to keep my pump from airlocking. So that would be an example of a jet pump application of minimum submergence. But minimum submergence applies across the board to all types of pumps. If you're dealing with a submersible pump, such as a sewage pump um, or a dewatering pump, a sump pump, so on and so forth, it applies to well pumps and submersible turbine pumps. So pretty much any pump where you're, um, I said pump a lot of times there, anytime that you're drawing uh, water down, in the pump is in the water, or the suction line is in the water, then you've got the risk of sucking air from the surface if you're not drawing the water at a, a reasonable depth. So there's a basic formula to figure out what minimum submergence is needed to prevent that from happening. Now there's a variety of other factors that influence the pump's ability or the equipment's ability to be able to suck air. For example, if you're drawing water through a foot valve, you've got that screened area, which is actually gonna help to decrease the submergence required because that screen kind of breaks up. If you were to get air coming into that screen, that screen helps to break that up so it doesn't occur as easily. Um, but this is a good baseline or a good reference for um, a, determining a roughly where you should be, even though it isn't gonna be exact depending on the situation. Another thing to keep in mind, for example, on water pumps where you're pumping water into a home for uh, potable use, uh, the deeper generally you can go with your submergence, the cleaner the water's gonna be. I think in most cases, if you're getting below 30 or 40 foot depth on your suction, then you're gonna have a lot less likelihood of bacteria that, that require sunlight and so forth. Um, so don't use this as a benchmark for where to put your pump or um, where to put your suction line, specifically because the deeper you can go, the better, but this at least allows you to verify whether you're meeting the minimum in those situations where you don't have the depth to make sure that you're not gonna suck air and potentially cause damage to the pump. So enough rambling about that, let's talk about this formula. So this formula, it might look a little intimidating, but it's actually pretty easy. So S is the submergence in inches, D is the bell diameter, which would be your pipe diameter, or in the case that you've got a submersible like sewage pump, you'd be measuring the, in, the intake size on it, so those can vary depending on the pump. Um, and then Q would be your rate of flow in gallons per minute. So let's just mock one up. We'll use a uh, submersible, um, or I, I mean, we'll just use a common flow rate, whether it's a submersible pump or a jet pump, we'll use 15 gallons a minute. So where, I guess I'm writing in black, S equals D, D being the bell diameter, we'll use a common pipe size, inch and a quarter, and that's pretty common for a suction line or a submersible pump. I probably need to give myself some more room here. S equals 1.25 and then 0 0.574. Q, which is gonna be our flow rate of 15 gallons per minute over the bell diameter again to the one and a half power. So that'd be 1.25 to the 1.5 power. So what you end up with is, um, we'll just simplify these out one at a time. So 0 0.574 times 15, you get 8.61 over 1.25 to the one and a half power. We're just gonna call that 1.39, just round it. Um, and then, oh, this is supposed to be plus, plus 1.25. So we'll simplify this down again. 8.61 goes into one, uh, six point one six times. Um, so plus 1.25, we end up with 7.41, roughly, um, equals S. So in this example, using inch and a quarter pipe and 15 gallons a minute, we're able to determine that our minimum submergence needs to be roughly, we'll call it seven and a half inches. Um, so that's pretty shallow, really, in terms of what's possible, but always 
more depth is better, but when you're dealing with those situations where you don't have the depth, this is a great tool to know whether you've got anything to be concerned about. In situations where you're dealing with an irrigation pump, let's say we're bumping this up to 30 or 40 or 50 gallons per minute, you can see that the depth starts to become more of a factor because the more water you're moving, then as well as the size of the pipe, then the more suction that that's gonna have to be able to draw air from the surface. So I hope that this was a pretty beneficial video for you. It's a very easy way to determine um, minimum submergence requirements. And again, minimum, can't emphasize that enough. Deeper is always better. So thanks for joining us today on another great video. We'll catch you next time.